Great. So I think we should get started. So as you know, the session is um, a support session, like a masterclass for Wiki Loves Africa. Um, and it's about an element that I think a lot of people, especially um, those who are, well, especially for people who are new, but also for those who are still in that interim between kind of like being an absolute common expert, commons expert, and people who are still like getting to know and understanding how it works. And that applies for people who've also been here for like five years or 10 years. So um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that um, you have the tools to uh, let other people know how to make their images more useful. So it's a little bit like, I don't know if anyone, um, you know, if you, you, if you hold it, they will come kind of thing. It's if you put an image onto Wikimedia Commons, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be used because there are literally millions and millions and millions of images on Wikimedia Commons. And to find them, find the right one to illustrate your article or the right one to illustrate the uh, right uh, concepts that you wish in whichever of the Wikimedia projects or off the Wikimedia projects um, is quite hard unless we make sure that we give as much information as possible in order for it to be found. So there are many pathways to, to providing this information and hopefully by the end of this masterclass you will have known um, the many different ways that it can be done. There are also many fun ways that you can encourage your communities um, to, to, um, to uh, get involved and to make sure that not only are, is there the information on the, art, on the um, images that can be used, but also to make sure that there's the information that the images are also placed. So there's some, um, and you will hear from Isaac later about um, Wikipedia wants photos, um, and you'll hear about from me about ISA, the ESA tool, and those are the fun ways that you can engage your community in order to make sure that not only are there lots of images of Africa on Wikipedia or on Wikimedia Commons, but that they are being used across the Wikimedia com um, projects, which is basically why we want them there. We don't just want to illustrate African articles, we also want to make sure that African images are included um, as ways of illustrating universal topics as well. Yeah. So that it's not just a, so there's a whole balance in how um, the world is represented. It's not just global north that's represented. It's also uh, the global south as well, for lack of a better term. Excuse that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run you through the upload process. So um, I decided to use an image that um, is, sorry, let me just go here. So I've decided to use a very clear image. Can you all see that? Yes, that's fine. Okay, so we're on the Wiki Loves Africa 2021 page. Um, and I thought we would just go through the process as you would do if you were just um, a competitor. So Perhaps just Ayla, remind yes. of how important it is to start from the main page so that the right tags are added from the start. <laughs> Very helpful. Okay, as Florence says, <laughs> it is really important to start from the main page of the competition using the upload button. Um, if you try and or I mean, basically the, the um, banner at the top, you can see the banner at the top. It also allows us to see how sweet it is when it's sliding like that. But um, it also allows us to click straight through to this page as well. So there's no confusion about how to get to the wizard. So if you click on the upload button, it takes you to the Wiki Loves Africa upload wizard and make sure that your uh, community knows that they that this banner at the top is the one that they use for the upload wizard because this upload wizard title at the top doesn't actually say wiki loves africa but the banner makes sure that it does and the upload wizard is something that uh, florence and roman have been working on a lot over the years in order to perfect in order to make sure that it's 
definitely it's uh, completely tailored to the Wiki Loves Africa competition so that all of the tags, the right tags and the right categories are added and the right country information is added as well. So in this case, what we do is we select media to share. And it was recently my son's 13th birthday. So I am going to add a picture of his balloons. Okay, so this is all pretty straightforward. Yes, it is my work, but you know that you can um, change that that's on the previous thing. So then the image title. So here I would go um, 13th birthday balloons. And the caption, so the image title is obviously what you would, um, sorry, balloons are spelled differently. Um, is what how you want the file to be found. So it's important that there's a very short description of that in the um, in the in the title. So uh, a lot of um, photographers upload directly, and they forget to change the image title. And a lot of them are just like um, numbers. So the number that the cat um, that the the camera has assigned to that image. And actually it, it's much better to have like some small description in the title, like a very, very brief description. Um, the caption you would say is what you would like people to read um, when you have it in the, so if it's placed in an article, it would be the description that you would like people to read. So in this case, it would be um, 13, Float. The description is much more about what is actually in the in so the um, the caption can be a little bit more creative about what you say, but the description itself. Um, is more about kind of like what is specific um, to, to the image. So it's uh, in this case, and we will work more into that, but in this case, um, it would be uh, helium balloons that depict a 13th birthday. As you can see, my typing skills are great today. Um, and then you would go on and do the other, the other uh, elements, which are the date that um, it was first published. Um, you would do the categories. So this is, um, we will do more about Cabal Florence. We'll do more about categories just now, but you could, I'm not sure if there's a celebration category or a birthday. Balloons, no, just birthday. Okay, and then it's really, really important to make sure that you select the country, especially for South Africa. Uh, not especially for South Africa, especially for Wiki Loves Africa, sorry. This, cat, this element doesn't exist in the normal upload uh, wizard. So um, it is specific to Wiki Loves Africa and it is really important because if you don't upload, if you don't make sure it's not a required thing because we cannot do that in the upload with a wizard situation, but it um, is very much important because if you have a local um, competition, say uh, Nigeria is hosting local prizes, then how are they going to find out which is a Nigerian image if it's not tagged here by this drop down? Okay. Um, so, and then of course you would add location information and more information if you require if it is required. So, if there was a copyright or if you are doing another version of um, an image that's already on Commons, uh, a remix as such then you would also add the information here, all right? And you publish the file. 
Uh, can you briefly, can I briefly interrupt you just to add a little, a little compliment with regards to caption versus description, because I believe it's, it can be super confusing. Hmm. Uh, the caption thing is an information that is related to Wikidata, to structured data. So that's an information that would, by default, appear in the future, maybe in a Wikipedia article when you publish the image without description. So it's supposed to be short and it's super, supposed to be super descriptive. In the description, in this case, there is not much, much to add, but that's typically where you will go in details about the source of the picture, the context where it was taken, maybe the different people involved. So sometimes it can be very much the same and sometimes it can be very, very, very different. Both are interesting. Uh, Ayla will, will um, show you afterwards at, at the end of the session, the ISA tool, which allows to improve this caption, this, this caption part of the whole process. But in the meanwhile, it is actually best if you can to fill up the two uh, area even though, as far as I remember, only the description part is mandatory. Yeah. Okay. And oh, the other element, I, I saw you hesitate when you put uh, balloons, uh, uh, parties or balloon anniversary. You can, uh, when you enter a category, you will have a proposition list from all the categories that currently exist. But you can, and when you do, you will see that the link appears in blue, which means that the category actually do exist. But if you think it's important, you can also create an entire new category. In this case, you add the mention, just as the one you tried to enter, Ayla, and it will yeah. appear with a red link, but you can still do it. So it, uh, what is quite surprising is that you can actually tag images with a category which do not exist yet. But if you think that it's needed, just you can create it at this stage when you upload the picture. And as I will show you afterwards, you can also add it after the, the uploads process. That you forgot. Okay, sorry. I just want to turn uh, whoever's. Uh, yeah. So I'm muted. Alvin, you have here. Yes. Okay, to you. Let's go on with the okay. 30th birthday balloon. Yes, so 13th birthday balloon. All right. So I don't know if anyone has been here for a while. Uh, you will know that this is a this add metadata is a new a new ish step. It's been here for about an hour, a year and a bit. Um, but it is part of the structured data on Commons project, and it's about linking. You will hear a lot more about this, but it's basically about linking um, what exists within the images to items on Wikidata. So in, by doing this, the importance of doing this, and you will hear a lot more of this later. Hi, Alvin, and hi, uh, whoever else came in recently. Um, the importance of doing this is by, um, in order to make, so if you are looking, say, for, um, if you are on um, Wikipedia and you're searching for an illustration of balloons um, or uh, 13th birthdays, then you would look, then it would help to, there's a search, um, there's a search tool that will help to look for, let me see if I can call up the search tool, sorry, that will then help you to um, find the images that you're looking for, but it's all linked through, um, Wikidata. So this search tool, SD search, would be if you go here and you go balloons. It should pull up images, an image <laughs> of balloons. much better, but this is um, obviously of all different types of balloon. Okay, 
So that's the importance that it helps the search engine. This is a better search engine than it currently exists on Commons itself um, for you to actually find the, the data. So here, um, it also allows us to explain um, what is actually happening within the image. And so sometimes uh, people get so frustrated, not frustrated, but kind of like impatient by the, the many steps that it takes in order to upload images. But I know I do, but in some cases, uh, but this is actually a really important step um, to take. So in this case, we're gonna go, uh, it's basically uh, how Florence said, it's, it searches for the, for the right kind of cat, the right um, elements as you, as you type. So in the depicts space here, it would be balloons balloon and you will see that there were, are options. Yes. So you can choose which one. Um, and then these are helium balloons. So you would also say it's helium. Um, there are roof supports or ceiling uh, roof supports. Struts. Sometimes you have to think through the different um, elements in order to to think what there are. So that so there's also pendant like pendant lights. So sometimes it's not there. Sometimes it is light fixtures. No. Uh, windows. Uh, windows. Window. Okay. And uh, so by doing that, that automatically then is added to the image tagged to then to these elements within uh, Wikidata. And then don't we- click, Don't click, just one okay. more thing to show here. The main element of that image is balloon. So you yeah. can mark as prominent. Yes, perfect. Also, okay. just reminder, yeah. all these things, they are taken from Wikidata, so you cannot create one. It's there or it's not there. If it's not there, it's not there. You cannot add it. So that's why she was looking for uh, like You can fixture. at the bottom here, the add statement. But uh, I think for the purposes, <laughs> I don't think it's, I would imagine it's a good idea at the moment just to do what comes up. So as you could see, I was kind of like trying to find the statements that connected, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not gonna go in now here and add roof strut because there might be something that's very similar, but at the moment I'm just pretty impatient and I don't, I, I wanna get on, but I've, I've done kind of like the main elements that I can see here, okay? Um, and then there's also the qualifier, the add qualifier section. And I think that that's something, I think that's a whole different ball game um, but I don't know, Florence, if you want to add anything about that. That well, looks like a no. <laughs> just, yeah, then it gets complicated, but essentially it's when you use a word and you want to add some uh, detail, let's say, for example, the picture I uploaded is a picture of me, let's say, and there are children on the picture, it might be birthday children there, and there are three children, I might add qualifier three. It's a very simple way of saying it, but these are further detail about what is in the picture and what we are exactly describing. So you would so, have here, then the app would be two because there are two balloons. <sighs> or two. No. Anyway. Let, okay. I think it's it's probably better to add this type of modification directly on Wikidata, but not on the picture. Here for the picture, just adding the depicts is really, really cool, a good idea. 
Yeah, so just keep it simple. So um, I would imagine just do the things that are pretty obvious within the and the ones that also come up um, as part of the selection. Uh, and remember to obviously do what is the most prominent. And then you publish the data. Obviously, if um, before the previous thing, it actually said you could skip that step. So if you are in a huge rush, you can do it. But it is better to at least have like one or two statements that link to Wikidata per image, um, if you wish. Yeah. So um, with the with uploading to to uh, images to specifically be used within Wikimedia Common with within the Wikimedia world rather than say uh, images of events uh, or images of Wikimedia events, there's a very big difference. So the ones that you want to use as illustrations or illustrated kind of um, to illustrate articles and um, elements, then it's very important to do this because it makes it much more useful for everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna now um, move on to Florence. Florence, is there, are there any questions in that? because I don't want us to get all too, um, there's a lot for you guys to absorb. So I just want to make sure that everyone can. I'm gonna stop sharing. Anyone else? Okay, all right. So um, no hands up. So Florence, are we going, I'm gonna try, Move the sharing. Yes, please. Uh, so, which one would that be? The right one. I wanted to go a little bit in detail about the categories and subcategories because I think it's often super confusing. So this is just to show you some example. And here we have uh, one of these Costa Mediterranea boat. And if you look in the, in the categories, you will see that there's a whole bunch of different category, some of them being visible by the greater public and some of them being hidden categories. So the general public visiting this image will not see all those categories there. They will only see this one. And you may see there are only three categories that have been added over time. Costa Mediterranea, Port Louis Arbor, and cruise ship in Mauritius. So here that describes an image that is easy to find either when you use the SD search tool that Ayla showed you earlier and which is listed on the meta page or it allows to navigate happily between these different categories and find some images related to that image. So generally, an image without category and it is an image that will probably never be used by anyone. And this is very, very sad. If you put no description and no categories, people will have absolutely no idea what this ship is about and it's unlikely they will use it and it's unlikely they will find it. What happened is that very, uh, very soon after images have been uploaded, most of the time there are no categories to these images. So it means either the person who actually uploaded images, oops, the uploaded, the person who uploaded the images can add some images or they can, um, other people can do it. So for this, I'm going to take an example. You may know that we are currently running uh, some photography masterclass in Cameroon as part of the project called Nos Jardins. It's in French, it's in the, in the Wikimedian of Cameroon's user group. They are not here today because they have an upload session exactly at the same time. As part of this project, we have asked some photographers to uh, learn, discover Wikimedia Commons, categories, uh, licenses, intellectual property rights issues, and to actually work on creating better picture. And last week, they have been doing this exercise. When they did this exercise, the pictures they took as exercise, they have been put tag only with the category no jardin. So these are some of the example, the, the picture there. 
And some of these pictures actually have been normally uploaded as part of Wikilobs Africa, but they did not realize they, how they could do it. So it was not tagged as the Wikilobs Africa picture. Let's take an example, probably this one, Jeune African wearing a mask and disinfecting her hands. When I go to this image, I see at the bottom that there is only, in, actually in this case, it's actually properly tagged, no jada. Let's say I want to add a category to this place. How do I do it? And let's say I do a temporary, um, a temporary example to show you how to do it when it's an, a brand new one. I go to the page and I edit the source of the page. And here in the, in the description of the article, I will find all the categories I'm interested in. If I want to add a new category, let's say category, I just will put it this way. Um, no Jardin images for Wikilobs Africa. This is a brand new category. So when I save this page, the category will appear in red. That means there is no description of this category, but the category does exist. And I have a proof. If I click on this link, I go to this category. The category is actually here because we see the article already, uh, the, the picture already in there, but there is no description. I want this category to be part of the bigger upper category, No Jardin. How do I do it? I simply create this category with some, somehow a description. So in this case, I would say that the category I'm interested in is, that's the upper category. I will say that category No Jardin images for Wikilobs Africa are part of the upper category No Jardin. And when I, when I click save, I will see that now my category completely exists and it's also listed in the upper category, No Jardin. If I check, if I go to No Jardin category, I will find the brand new category I just created, No Jardin images for Wikilabs Africa. And I don't need to, de to do any more than that. Now the category does exist. If I want to tag more images with this category, I will simply go to any other interesting image I think might be suitable. Um, I think I saw another guy with a mask. Maybe this one. I don't know. Uh, a healthy dish. I will go to the healthy dish. And I'm thinking I will add this again in the big category that I just created. To do so, I click again on edit source and again, I add category. So of course, this is going to take a very long time because if I want to do every category in turn, I need each time to go to the image, click on edit this page, add the category manually and save. So there's a, a system that might go more quickly but let me show you first. I see here at the bottom a peer category, No Jardin images for Wikilobs Africa. One of the problems we have as part of Wikilobs Africa is that many people actually don't put any category. So we have to go to all the images. And when we go to all the images, we have a big, big category that is images from Wikilobs Africa without categories. And we have nearly 3000 of those. Nearly 3000 of pictures are without categories to better describe the images at the moment. So some of us go to this category very often and we try to sort out all these various pictures. And I can see there's the 13th birthday balloon. And you might say, oh, Let's do a little bit of cleanup amongst all those images. And the best way to do it is to click on the image and check. And what happened in this case is that when Ayla uploaded the, this brand new birthday party image, 
She, yes, it is true that she added categories, balloons in shape of letters and birthday and celebration, and, but she completely forgot to remove the category image from Wiki Loves Africa without categories. So that's why it appears in that category. But in the meanwhile, we have 3000 images to check. It is quite long to add categories to images. So how can we do it more easily? I have a suggestions for you. And I invite you to, to uh, activate this uh, little tool. Go to your preferences here at the top of the page. And when you go to preferences, if it works. Hello. Patiently waiting for the internet. Yeah. I then go to gadget. And when I am in gadget, I have a wall list of small tools that I can activate or deactivate to make my life easier and better. By default, a certain number of those, uh, pro of those tools are activated and others are completely deactivated. I invite you to go to this page and look at and test and look what could be interesting. So you have things related to a better navigation. You have elements related to better editing and upload. And in this list, I will suggest this one, which is a rather brand new one, which is a video cut tool to trim video uh, uploaded on Wikimedia Commons. That's an interesting one. Then you have a whole bunch related to files and categories and interface and maintenance and tools for category. So this is the one that is interesting. And uh, I suggest all of them, all of them are interesting. Uh, very briefly describing all of them, uh, PetScan is actually a system that allows you to do queries pretty easily. This is a complicated one, don't use it until you feel comfortable. Uh, you also have in the very interesting one, the Glamorous is a system that allows you uh, file to see file usage in one, art, uh, in one image. And the one that I find is very, very interesting is the hot cat one. Why? What does it do? It allows you to add, remove, and change a category on the page very quickly, way more quickly than going to the page, editing the page, saving the page. So let's activate this hot cat category. So again, I'm repeating the case in case the name. That's the hot cat tool in the tool for categories that I invite you to activate. Then when you save, here's what will happen. When it's saved. Hello there. I'm getting a bit desperate now. This is not happening. <laughs> Just checking in case it was saved without me noticing. Nope. Okay. Oh, maybe it did. Oh, Mickey, maybe it did now. So what difference does that make? Oh, it's not saved.
Yes, finally it did. So let me show you the difference. Here I'm in one of the files that was uploaded as part of No Jardin. If you go down to this page, down to the page, you will find the categories mentioned here. And notice the difference with what we were seeing early on. There are some little minus and plus and up and down little um, things everywhere. This allows you to very quickly add a category just there. How do you do that? If you want to remove one, you click on the minus. I'm not going to do that. And if you want to add one, you just put add. But this is the modify. Okay. If you want to, you go to the end of the line, you put plus. And here I could put um, no jardin. And it will propose me automatically the list of the categories that start with this name including the one I just created a few minutes ago, No Jardin Image for Wiki Loves Africa. If the category is proper, you will see a little check thing. You click OK, and that's it. It's added. So within one click, you can do it. That goes much more quickly. So it's here. That goes much more quickly than doing it by hand, page by page. So I invite you to activate this tool. Uh, to go back to what Ayla was saying, why is it really, really super important is in particular because of this type of tools that allows you to search for info. And when you use the structured data, hey tools, and you have the link here. Converse, just if you want to check. Oh, I put it to Alvin here. So I invite you to go there. In this case, you can do search, which are based at the same time on the pics, the elements that Ayla mentioned early on, on text and also on categories. So you can do a search that is very powerful and allowing you to go very much in details. So for example, if I was looking for a, de a depict, I could look for a boat and I would want it to be related to a category, which is uh, Wiki Loves Africa, for example. I don't know where it would, this would go. I never tried or Wiki, whatever. And I would search based on that. Of course, there are no reason because Wiki Loves Art is not going to be super helpful in this case, but you can have a descript, um, search that are, um, I don't know, C. You can make some search on as well on colors and so on. So you can really uh, cut down on your research and go much deeper. Um, essentially, that's what I wanted to show you, but uh, tell me if it was clear about how to create a new category and if you have question on the matter. Should I activate tools for sub projects? Uh, what do you mean, Mermoz? What do you mean by sub project? Mermoz, if you want to uh, be specific about your question, you need to switch on the microphone. It is in my preference. last part. Um, well, Mermoz is... I, I'm not sure I understand the, the question by Mermoz. Okay. Um, well, he makes it more clear. 
Um, I just want to also answer the question that Douglas asked, which is about uh, how does um, the depicts statements, um, adding depict statements, how does that reflect on your contributions? And every single time that you link um, a, a description to the structured data, it counts as one contribution. So um, if you are a contribution um, leveler up gamer person who wants, who's very keen about what that shows, um, then yes, it's very important. It's a great way of improving your uh, contribution um, score. Uh, because every single is it so when i uploaded it and i shared the link in at the chat when i uploaded the balloons picture every single one so it doesn't just do like it doesn't add mm. you know your whole upload adds as one contribution it actually the the image itself is one contribution and then um the actual each word that was linked to a statement in wikidata then is added as a contribution as well. So I had like six contributions just as part of my up that one image upload. Okay, so if that's your story, then yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good way. Um, <laughs> good way uh, in the beginning to get your contributions up if that's important to you. But yeah, at least for comments. Yeah. Not for Wikipedia. <laughs> But it's a gen the, across the obviously the um, the projects. Yeah. So the I, I put the screen again on the hot cat. That's this one. You should activate. Uh, if any of you have suggestions on on super super cool gadget to use, please feel free to share them. Because from time to time I go there, I activate something, I try something, it doesn't really work. I deactivate it and then I don't go back for a year. So uh, there might be some others which are interesting. Uh, for example, I like the cat a lot as well, a little bit. It's, it's, uh, it's quite useful as well to move around categories. It's easier, it makes things easier. But the hot cat is, uh, hot cat is really a must be, must have. Florence, can you yes. uh, explain uh, at the bottom of the 13th, say at the bottom of the 13th, birthday balloons there's a whole load of hidden categories that um people can see yeah okay. where there's like the creative commons attribution share alike missing sdc copyright license and yet you can see the licensing in the image so i don't know if you want to explain some of those things uh let me explain one thing when we uh, what is automatically uploaded added to the categories when you actually create um, upload an image. Automatically what is added is something that looks like, because I cannot for you look. Mermoz, I will show you afterwards how you do it. You go to preference. Are you in French screen? Let me just check. You go to preference here at the top. And when you're in preference, you have this list of things and you click on gadget. Gadget is the way to go. And when you're on gadget, you scroll down the page and you look for the section where it is written categories. So it's really uh, preferences, gadget, and um, category, tools, and podcast. Uh, okay, when we have an image being uploaded through the automatic system, it adds automatically a template to every image uploaded, which is this way, Wiki Loves Africa 2021. And when this template is added, it will actually automatically load to the images a whole bunch of categories without you being aware of that. In particular, it will add uh, by default images with uh, Wiki Loves Africa to check. If you have not entered specified a country, it will add also without unknown country. And by default, if you do not remove it, it will add the category without category. If you chose uh, a country in the process, it will automatically sort out the picture 
directly in the, in the category of the country as well. If you do not use that template or the, uh, the funeral, uh, the images get lost. We'll, we'll go back with, uh, with uh, Guillaume about that. But so with regards to balloons, when I go to, I should find it here again, I guess. Oh, it's lost. No, I turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uncool. It was a cool example. I did it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but it's in South Africa now. <laughs> okay. South Africa, maybe around here. So, where's the balloon? The first one. The third. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what was your question with regards to this one? So right at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So there are also the Creative Commons attribution share alike missing SDC copyrights statuses as well. You know, all of these copyright license um, categories. I'm taking the opportunity to show you exactly how to create a, a categories that is hidden. Okay. Again, when someone is not logged in, what they will see is only the visible category. They will not see the hidden categories that are just for maintenance. So if you want to create such a category that is hidden, you actually add something in the description of your category. When you are in the category here, you simply add hidden cat. That's it. Hidden cat. Once you do that, it's no more visible. Two people who aren't logged in. Two people who aren't logged in. And I think it's part of your preference to choose whether you want to see the hidden categories or not. Okay. So your preference, you can say, I don't want to see them. All right. Uh, and uh, otherwise, for with regards to your... Gosh, it's here now. <laughs> okay, here. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> normally it automatically in particular add the category uploaded what via campaign wiki loves africa so everyone who use the funeral will have this category by default yes. um, we also have all the categories related to the licenses such as in case the cc by sa 4.0 whatever and why do we get that It's because when we, uh, and I don't know in this case why it was not added. I have no idea if someone knows, perhaps Isaac will know and tell us. But uh, the, what is important to know is when you upload an image, by default through Wikilove's Africa, it will be under Creative Commons 4.0. But when you add structured data information, the structured data information will be under CC0. So that's a different license. Essentially, that means there is, it's the equivalent of public domain. So normally the, the information added should be under CC0. Why does it enter into that category? I don't know. Isaac, do you know that? It didn't give me an option when I was doing that. No, that it didn't. I know when it yeah, so it didn't give me an option to approve the category, uh, the, the depiction um, link, a statement categories. Yeah, um, but normally so CC0 by default that you agree to. No, 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 but it didn't no. allow me to, it didn't give me a, an, an option to approve or to, it didn't say in the, in the upload through the wizard, this wizard, it didn't say um, just just for your notification, this is the thing, you know, this is, that's probably why it hasn't linked in. I don't know. I have no idea. Honestly, because I don't if know. You, if you do do it through the, um, the usual uh, wizard, then yes. it's you at that, it tells you at that, that, that last screen, when you're adding the depict statement, it then tells you these yeah. are being licensed under that amount. And so in I this think case it's a wizard didn't. thing. Yeah, I think it's a wizard issue. I don't think it's a, anything to, that... We need to check out. Well, I don't think it's a big deal in any cases. But yeah, we need to check out why this happened. I don't know. Okay, all right. Because this so category is used by bots copying information. You are not a bot. 
So no, just, I, uh, no. <laughs> trying very hard not to be. <laughs> trying very hard not to be. So in any cases, uh, I'm then going to hand the, the screen to uh, Guillaume, mm -hmm. because what find out what we find out over time is that people tend to upload lots of images, but completely forget to put uh, categories or forget. I'm trying to go back to this simply this image to show you. Uh, they forget to either um, put the country, so we get plenty of images lost without any country reference, or they don't put categories and description, or they actually do put categories and description, but just as Isla did early on, they, re they forget to remove the without categories. So you must realize that after images are uploaded by you guys, there is a lot of uh, maintenance work to, to do after you. So we, want, we would like to show you how we do it and invite you to help as well. I'm um, stopping the sharing and I'll uh, hand out the screen to you. Uh, I think you should be able Guillaume. to, Guillaume, it should be, it should allow for people to do it. Can you access? Uh, I also want to point out that Guillaume is one of the people who uh, tirelessly, tirelessly every single year goes through and helps to check. Um, so we owe him a huge debt. He's an awesome person. Okay, thank you yeah. for being with us. Thank you. So as uh, Florence uh, has said, we receive uh, with uh, Wiki Loves Africa each year a lot of pictures. And uh, as we are the organization, as we organize this uh, event, we have to do the maintenance work to be sure that the picture can be accepted on uh, Wikimedia Commons and can be used on uh, Wikipedia and uh, other projects. So it's a uh, hard work. So I have created a page to monitor the uh, image checking. So it's uh, this page. And um, yeah, you have first a list of uh, image, images to check for each country. For example, you can see in Algeria, there was yesterday 35 uh, images to check. And if you click on the link, you can have the list of uh, images. So here you have the list of uh, files where in the category images from Wikileaks Africa 2021 in Algeria and in the category images from Wikileaks Africa 2021 to check. And then you can click on uh, the, uh, on the file to uh, check it. So when you check the, uh, the file, you have uh, three things to, uh, to check. First, the copyright status, then watermark, and the uh, date upload. So I am going to give you an example. Mm, from Senegal. Here we have a six sites to check in Senegal. For example, this one. So here you have a, a picture. We can assume it's uh, okay from copyright. It uh, doesn't look like uh, a picture stolen on uh, a website. And if we go on the bottom, of the page, here you have the, the metadata of the picture. And on the metadata, here you can see the camera manufacturer. It's uh, a smartphone, a Samsung uh, phone. So here we can be uh, pretty sure that the, uh, um, the participant have uploaded his own uh, picture. It's a picture that the participant have taken with uh, his uh, own uh, smartphone. 
So I uh, think there is no copyright problems. If we check the picture, we, uh, we don't see a watermark on the picture. And the upload date is 25 March 2021. So it's during the, the contest. So this picture is OK. And we can remove the category images from Wikilogs Africa to check here. So I remove. And now it's not in the category images to check. So is it okay? For this? Um, ju ju don't quit this one. If you look at the bottom yeah. as well, oh, it's not here. For example, this category alimentaire. So yes. the, the other, aside from checking the copyright situation, uh, alimentaire actually doesn't exist as a category. Uh, we might at this point add categories, and then in this case, we could we would be able to remove the images from Wikilabs Africa without categories. But this is a case where the person tried to add a category, it just doesn't exist. Uh, most of the categories on Commons are in English, so of course, alimentaire is a French word, so it doesn't doesn't work. Yes. So when, when we a... we check. The, uh, the images yeah. we can uh, also check the categories yeah. and uh, it's better to uh, to do it in the same time uh, but we have to find the categories for this image i think i, I am uh, going to uh, do it later yeah. as you have uh, already shown how to uh, add category yeah. So it's uh, two different things to check um, the copyright status and the categories. We can do uh, in the same time, but uh, it's not a big job. Then I have uh, another example. This picture seems to be uh, taken uh, on uh, a website because there is a very low site And to uh, to check it, if uh, if you use uh, Google Chrome, you can do a right click on the picture and do uh, to uh, search an image with Google. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> and here you can see uh, this image is uh, on different websites on Twitter. So this this picture was uh, stolen on other websites. So when it's a, it's a copyright violation, so we have to ask the deletion of this picture. And to, to do this, we can edit the, the site and add this line. So it's the template copy view, type source, equal, and then you copy paste the, uh, the address of the website. And then you, uh, you publish. And later, in a comments administrator will uh, verify uh, it's, uh, it's a copyright violation, and then uh, delete the picture. So I go back to, um, to the image taking the page. So the, 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 the watermark, I will give you an example. Here, you have a picture with a watermark. The participant have uh, added uh, his name on the picture. 
but in the contest rules of uh, we Cloud africa a picture with a watermark um, cannot win an award so we have to um, to indicate this picture as a watermark and then other um, common users can uh, remove the watermark so you click on edit and you add this template watermark when you have edit watermark you can see here the template this image this image contains digital watermarking or credits in the image itself Is it okay? Okay, so we have three things to check copyright, watermark, and date upload. And uh, you can do it for, for your country. Here, you, uh, you look for the line of your country. For example, you are from Uganda, I think. We have organizers uh, from Uganda. Here, you have uh, 154 files to check here. And here, you have the list. If you click on the thumbnails, you can see the picture. And then click on the, the picture you want to check and verify the, the copyright, etc. Okay, so I, I go back to the uh, general page. We have also a table with uh, the um, image without category. So uh, you have seen before how to uh, add the categories. And here you have for your country, for example, Uganda, 146 image. And here you have the list. And then you, uh, you click on the, on the picture and add the categories. So it's the two main things to, uh, to check, the uh, copyright and categories. On the image checking page, we have also uh, not tagged images. It's uh, images which were not uploaded with the upload wizard. And the participant have uh, directly uh, added a category like um, images from Wikileaks Africa 2021 in Uganda, but not the general category. But there's not a lot uh, of picture here. And uh, I think that the uh, international team can uh, manage it. We have also the uh, country, the uh, image with that uh, country situation test and a last tool here you have the uploader list it's the list of participants of wikilogs africa 2021 here you have all the participants and the number of uh, files but you can do it for your country so on the top of the page And make, uh, so, for example, images from Wikileaks Africa 2021 in Uganda. Go. So in Uganda, 
you have uh, 31 uploaders. So you can uh, see all, all the uh, uploaders. The thing you can do, it's going on the user page and here. Can report, uh... Here you for this participant, for example, Josie 2000. Uh, we, he has not um, added his email address. So if he win a prize, we cannot contact him. So uh, what you can do, it's um, check for all the participants, if we have their email, and if we have not, you can send him a message on the discussion page to ask them to add this uh, their email in their preference. I had not seen you. You added the the user list. I had not seen you, you had the, the, the user list. The user list? Yeah, I, I had never noticed that actually. So yeah, it's, mm. uh, it's really cool, like yes. it. Mm. And yeah, and there's the deletion request, which is something we did maybe two years, uh, you did last year, two years ago, I don't remember. Because uh, sometimes we were plagued by uh, some teams complaining of deletion requests. So there's a, if you click on the PET scan list link, what appears? So we currently have 27 results, 27 images from Wikilabs Africa, which are proposed for deletion. Can you, uh, at the top, also add the, the country source? Let's say images from Nigeria. There's the wrong O. Oh. Eighteen of which are related to Nigeria. Isaac, you mean the the image checking page or another one? This one. I mean, sorry, Florence, mm -hmm. I mean the 27 um, list of imaging that, that has been proposed for the nation. I, I want to see, uh, I want to follow up with that discussion yes. to see if some had been wrongly in the meta application. Guillaume, can you share the link? Uh, uh, the one without Niger, the one with the, uh, the request with the 27 images. Um, yes, it's here. Yes, on the bottom of the page uh, image checking. Okay. The okay. So the link is. This is this one. Oops. So yeah, any question about what um, Guillaume just explained? It's it's very really super super useful. Um, I I think teams need to be careful not to just 
well, you already take a lot of time taking the picture, um, talking about the contest, training people. This, that's all, already a lot of work. But the other thing is that if you just download the picture and don't really look after them, uh, care of them, some of them might be deleted without you ever even noticing and some might be super poorly categorized because you know you guys know about what are on the pictures which city it is about which what it shows when we do not so it's not so easy for us to categorize and tag every single image from every single country and uh, i think it's very important that you use the tool that um, guillaume showed you in particular to check for your own specific country. Are there images proposed for deletion? Are there images without categories? Are there images with uh, uh, whatever watermarks that needs to be mentioned? Uh, you can check out directly for, the, for each, every single country over there. And in the pet scan thing, you can add, actually add if it, the one that um, Florence has linked to if you add after the images um, for images from Wiki Loves Africa 2021, you can add like in Nigeria or in South Africa or in Uganda and then press the do it button and it will show you the ones that are specific to your country. Okay. As is being shown right in front of you. I see only one case in Uganda. Yeah, there's only one case in South Africa as well, but Nigeria, Isaac. But anyway. Yes, yeah, so, so, you know, in the past, um, <laughs> to be honest. About I will be taking a look. I'm shocked that um, we have this huge number from my country. It's looking like COVID-19 cases. <laughs> so close. And Ceslas can also help you. It's a national case of national pride. <laughs> yeah, yes, please. please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. All national right. pride, I agree. Just, just to react to what Ceslas was mentioning. Yes, of course, you can try to contact the people on the user page, talk page, and maybe they will have the, the they will be bright enough to check. But what we noticed in the past is that nearly a third of our winners at the international level did not put an email, but most of yeah. the time those are rather professional. So often they left some information in the metadata of the photography or they left information on their user page or their username is quite prescriptive. So we found them, we tracked them uh on facebook on twitter down. and yeah this was hunting this was kind of yeah, a funny a hunt kind of vibe and thing. sometimes like... it was very challenging i remember a cameroon person it took uh, at the same time joel from cameroon and bashunda from algeria and me to hunt the person down but we found her uh she had participated to a uh, to some uh, festivals Europe before. So we had to contact the director of the festival who ended up giving her, giving us the address. So sometimes it was quite challenging. So yeah, anything that we can make to get sure that people activate their user mail, that would be nice because sometimes it can take a lot of effort if we have to track them down. But we always yeah. manage to in the end. Yeah, we have. Um, and it also helps that a lot of them have kind of some social media presence that's kind of linked to us in some way. But yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. OK, but I want to thank Guillaume for the most amazing uh, page. I think this really, really helps us to get to oh, yeah. the bottom of it. Um, it's, it's so beautifully presented and it shows all of the elements, I think, that it, what it does is it makes visible how much work is done in the back end every year um, that I think most of us just don't get to see. So I want to thank you guys for doing this work um, because it really is important to make sure that the quality shines through all of the other stuff that is just uploaded on, on an off chance. Mm. It also shows just how many people just sometimes don't understand or are just chancing it, you know, that they just don't think they don't understand copyright. And so they they just think that they can upload somebody else's photo and claim responsibility for it. It's kind of interesting from a 
before we move on before we move on to Isaac, I would just like to uh, also thank uh, Jacqueline. Uh, yeah. She's not there, and she, you will never see her because she she never comes to the channels or anything. Uh, but Jacqueline, every single year since we started Wiki Loves Africa, is doing a huge amount of cleanup with regards to categories and description and insertion of the images in Wikipedia. We have if not the highest, but one of the highest rate of insertion of images from a photo contest in Wikipedia are images. This is not said enough. We insert an, an, an amazing amount of images in Wikipedia articles. So the images are useful. They are illustrating Wikipedia articles. And this is largely done thanks to the job of uh, Jacqueline. Can you plan the same session for the French people? Yes, we can. Uh, we could. Yeah, well, we'll try to see to do that, uh, Nermoz. Uh, although somebody might have to take my spot. <laughs> uh, we'll have to take your spot. <laughs> Guillaume is fine. Isaac will not really be able to, but then... Isaac, you know, he might also struggle. We'll see. Maybe he can, you know, <laughs> we do a lingo quickly together. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank, thank Nobody you. is taking anybody's spots. We're all going to be there. <laughs> Before that, uh, I would like to actually add to um, Florence' remarks on Jacqueline. Uh, I, I, I don't know this person, but they seem to be super active with categories. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember last year uh, or so, uh, I got a lot of requests from them to help review uh, some photos uh, on comments. And I think this user is uh, uh, really, really uh, helpful. I don't know that, but I think. Uh, they, they, they've been doing exceedingly well in the area of cleanup, as Florence rightly mentioned. So uh, kudos to that person. Uh, hopefully one day we can meet on a platform like this and yes. I can uh, repeat what I'm saying again. <laughs> I will tell her, but each time I try to invite her, she just, you know, she, no, she takes care of her job <laughs> and, and she doesn't want to show up anywhere. Um, but yeah, I'll tell her. She's, she's waiting for the let's go. Um, uh, this year, I, I told her not to really do that until the end of the contest. So she hasn't started yet. And it would be Perfect. nice if she was not the only one doing it. So, yeah. Yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. yeah a, a lot of people that? actually run away from, it's actually a very boring tax for people. And most people don't want to do it because they don't want to do the same thing over and over again. So uh, they, I think there are just very few people uh, working on those areas, but we do need to encourage more people to join in and you know, but, jump in and, you know, and you to know, actually work on these areas. That, that's a bit unfortunate because at the same time, yes, it's a, it's a long task because there are many images, so it's not such an easy task. But it's also very interesting to each time you see a picture which I you find is interesting and, and good enough to illustrate an article to reflect and to think where could I actually use that image somewhere and trying to look for the right articles where you can use the picture is 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 quite challenging and and uh, I think that's the part that she likes doing the most. And then we have some super big satisfaction. If you look at the Wikipedia page about Wikipedia on the French Wikipedia, I don't know if it's the case on the English, but there's a, a big, one of the big, very nice picture of Wiki Loves Africa over there. So she has the pride from time to time to see that uh, some of the images are being inserted in very high profile articles. So it's cool. Anyway, I'm handing you the microphone somehow uh, someone will have to share the screen with you okay. okay so that's fine so um, I hope my screen my screen is visible now it's it's yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I managed to prepare this very late yesterday, so it's it's not too uh, perfect, but uh, we can still get something out of it. So uh, again, I want to welcome everyone to uh, this uh, webinar section on improving the usefulness of uploaded images on Wikipedia articles. 
uh, I found this section uh, super useful because um, the overall point of collecting images is to you know, get them used on articles. Then again, we can only measure those that are used on Wikis. Of course, there are also several you know, educational use of those images that we may not really have access for. I mean, sex too. Basically, uh, people use images from comments on different, uh, uh, in different areas, uh, not necessarily on Wikipedia articles, which means they use it offline as well. So we may not be able to track that, but the one we could track is important for us to actually find a way to get people to learn how to make sure they are, you know, uh, super useful. So my name is Isaac Olatunde. I coordinate the Wikipedia Pages Warning Photos campaign uh, that uh, we started yesterday, I mean, last year, to primarily ensure that um, images collected from various uh, uh, photographic contexts, uh, Wikilove Africa, Wikilove Movement, Wikilove's Ads, uh, get used on Wikipedia articles. We also want to ensure that uh, images hosted on Wikimedia's commons generally get used. Uh, Florence mentioned something earlier that, yeah, you can upload you know, thousands of thousands of images on, on commons, but there are no uh, indication. You can't be sure if any of those uh, will be used on Wikipedia, Wikipedia articles. So we want to ensure that we make use of these images, you know, uh, beyond just uploading them to commons. So it's an annual campaign where, you know, Wikipedia across the world uh, and across uh, Wikipedia language projects and communities add photos to Wikipedia that uh, are lacking those uh, photos. Just like I mentioned, it's an international campaign that we want to use to support uh, all other international photographic contexts in the Wikimedia movement. So just a very quick one. The, the primary aim is, is basically to improve the quality of Wikipedia articles. And of course, to promote the use of images uh, collected from these various control, um, con con photographic contexts, such as Wikilove Africa and, and the rest of them. We also want to promote the use of auto media files, just like I mentioned earlier on Wikipedia articles. Commons holds millions upon millions of articles. Last that time I checked, it was about 53 million. So that's a huge uh, you know, file to be files to be used on Wikipedia articles. So last year we launched the campaign. Uh, basically, it was surprisingly uh, successful uh, with over 90,000 articles in proof with photos. And we have the campaign uh, uh, adding values to more than 270 language versions of Wikipedia and over 600 editors participated. So this is the uh, uh, important uh, areas that I would like to talk to you about. So there are a lot of um, questions on how to actually use photos on Wikipedia articles. The first question is, where can I find those photos? Is there a particular categories I need to go to to check, I mean, to uh, use photos? Then how will I be able to match, you know, uh, photo with corresponding articles or articles where they are required? So these questions comes up uh, all the time. And people sometimes ask if they can actually use images uploaded by, um, other people, uh, mostly from new editors. Yes, the answer is yes. So uh, I'll be talking to you very briefly uh, on this. So uh, find usable images is something that is very key and important. So uh, images uh, that uh, you can use various, for example, you might be interested in, uh, uh, I mean, depending on what interests you, you might be interested in using your own image. So images that is your own that you took by yourself, and that you uploaded to comments or other local Wikipedias where local uploads are acceptable are allowed for use on Wikipedia articles. So what I'm saying basically is that you can use your home, your home image. I mean, for example, you go out for photo walks to participate in Wikilove's movement. Those images can be used on Wikipedia articles. Then you can also, if you see an image and an article that is interesting and you feel that it should be illustrated, but this uh article is written by someone somewhere and this image is also taken by someone somewhere and you feel it should be used yes feel free to to use them as as long as they are you know freely licensed and if you look at the common um, interface uh, we only accept three uh, uh licenses cc hole cc zero then cc by exit then cc by so if any of the images you find are licensed under this uh uh licenses that you can actually use them on articles you can also use a public domain work the cc0 
on articles if you find them, uh, regardless of where they are uploaded, either on Flickr or, or Unsplash or Pizzle Bay. So you can actually, uh, you know, upload them to common and use uh, them on Wikipedia articles. Then there are also local Wikipedias that accept um, uh, direct uploading, uh, which they can actually, uh, I mean, they allow fair use, which means you can locally upload those images and use them on Wikipedia articles. So if you found such image on such Wikipedia, you can use them on Wikipedia article as a fair use as well. Uh, just like I mentioned, you, you know, you people ask where they can find those photos. You can find them on comments. There are millions of images posted on comments. Then Flickers is also a very large uh, platform where people uh, upload millions so millions of photos. You can go there and, you know, uh, first of all, transfer the image to comments, then use on Wikipedia articles. Then uh, some local Wikipedia, just like I mentioned, uh, predominantly I know English Wikipedia do accept uh, local upload, but for fair use, so uh, you can do that. Then PCB, Unsplash, there are a host of uh, auto Getty image of, um, I mean, Getty image is also one of such a size that post freely. Oh, okay. If you find them there, you can actually use them. And also uh, on comments, there are various um, photographic contexts that con contribute images to comments. Uh, Wiki Loves Africa is a major context that, you know, uh, actually ensure that images relating to Africa's, uh, uplo Africa are uh, uploaded to Wikimedia Commons. So, uh, you can you know pick a category of images contributed by Wikilos Africa. For example, let's say images from Wikilos Africa 2021. You see a whole start, a whole lot of uh, photos that has been uploaded. Then you can actually find an article where they can be just super useful and you know hard. So that um, there are other ones. We have Wikilos Monument, Folklore's, uh, Wikilos Earth, um, and several other ones. But these are the most uh, popular ones that folks around the world participate in. So just like I mentioned, the primary aim is to improve quality of Wikipedia article. Then we also want to ensure that we promote uh, uh, readership of those articles because uh, generally images attract you know, readers and it it's, uh, connects readers to articles and also convey information more quickly than those without images. So this is primarily what we want to achieve uh, with the WB, WP campaign. Then uh, there are, concerns about captioning also from usually new people. Uh, and I do understand that many of the challenges comes from the fact that people contribute to Wikipedia in a language they do not actually speak. For example, I, I don't speak French and it's, it, it, will, it will make no sense for me to add photos to article in French because I'm not likely to get the caption right. Either I'm you know, committing a grammatical error or I am writing something that will not really make any sense to native speaker of, um, of French. So that's that's a, a particular uh, challenge, but we do encourage people to make sure that you only had photos to articles in the language that you speak uh, uh, physically. You don't go to you know a community where you don't even understand their language, but because you want to you know make sure you use more photos, then you just don't anything. That, it just doesn't make sense. So there are basic things that makes a good caption. Uh, your caption must be succinct, which means that um, we don't want too much um, bulky information about the photo or the, this connection with the article in question. We want you to, as much as possible, try to succinctly uh, caption your photos. Then um, you also need to ensure that your photo, I mean, your caption provide context for that picture. You understand? You don't use a caption that has no connection whatsoever with a photo, with a photo that is being used on Wikipedia articles. Then. We also want to make sure that you, you know, uh, put your caption in such a way that it draws the reader's attentions into the articles. This is very, very important. Then you establish the pictures relevance to the article, which means that you don't just grab photos and you know start adding photos to article randomly because you want to get more photos uh, of your uh, context uh, uh, used on Wikipedia articles. Make sure that there is um, a link or uh, a, a very uh, good relationship or connection between your photo and that uh, article. So this is uh, basically what this is about. Now, uh, I'm done with the presentation, so I, I, I would like to uh, show you uh, how to 
add photos to Wikipedia article very quickly. So um, since my screen is still visible, so I would like to take, for example, uh, article on centrifuge, centrifuge. So this is a medical equipment, actually. So uh, it's lacking photo, and you think, oh, there are a huge number of photos I could you know, get uh, uh, an image of centrifuge from then add to these articles. So uh, there are various ways to do that. You can you know, go to Wikimedia Commons here and actually search for the photo using the article's title. For example, centrifuge. So you can come here to say, hey, you are looking for centrifuge. Let's say centrifuge. So when you search for centrifuge, it will give you either directly uh, showing you uh, uh, the file or taking you to categories where you can actually find that file. But I, I, I would like to save time. So in that regard, uh, okay, let me just uh, search. Let's see if, if it brings it up. So, um, okay, good. Centrifuge. So uh, I'm looking for centrifuge that is a medical equipment, for example. Sorry. So this is an example of a, it's, it's an animated version of a, of a centrifuge. So you can actually use this XV, SVG file or search for a better or auto high quality uh, centrifuge. So, but I know that um, this is one way you can search or look for your choice of file. But another way around is that, for example, if you want to ensure that you get images used from the photographic context that you participate in, for example, the Wikilove article. So you can go to the categories of photos uploaded as part of this context. For example, if you are from Nigeria, so it could be images from Wikilove Africa in Nigeria. If you are from Uganda, uh, you say images from Wikilove Africa 2021 in Uganda, in Ghana, just, just like that, on and on. But uh, if I'm generally interested in using images from the, the context, regardless of my countries, then I will just look for what might interest me. You know, say, hey, this is one. And, um, oh, this is a centrifuge. Then you open the, 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 the file. Sorry if I'm too fast and let me know if that is likely to be a problem so I could slow down a bit. So this is the digital centrifuge. So I can see that the file name is written in French. Then uh, the description is also in French. Then I want to use it on an English article. So this, um, So this is what I would do. I don't speak French, but the caption is, is provided in French. So in most cases, um, if it's a topic that you're familiar with, you may not necessarily uh, refer to the descriptions on that uh, file. So I don't want to provide the caption in French in an English article. So I know this is a digital centrifuge used in medical laboratory. So I can actually caption this photo as a digital centrifuge used in medical laboratory. It's as simple as that. But uh, if I want to begin to guess, then I, I'll probably interpret this as a centrifuge in medical laboratory in the Republic of Benin. I might be correct, I may not, but because I don't want to begin to uh, guess or present caption in a way that might be wrong or offensive by uh, the native speaker of that language. So I would rather make it simple and say, and comes to my article and say, 
This is digital uh, centrifuge used in medical laboratory. Now on the article, you edit the article. You want to add it, just edit it. Can I interrupt you Sorry. one second, uh, Isaac? I think there are some people wait in the waiting room. I don't know who oh. exactly can click yes. Okay, great. Is that Isla or is that yes, you? Yes, that's my fault. Okay. I, had, I had been looking, but I looked away. <laughs> okay, you can go on. Sorry about that. Okay. Carry on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the file. You come to the file. Then when you look at the file, there are elements here. If you want to just download the photo on your device, maybe laptop or mobile phone, you click on download. It will just automatically download it to your file. I mean, to your device. Then if you want to use, use it on your website, then you can click on this. Mm -hmm. So it will give you, let's click. So you have this like this. Then you can, it's embedded like this. So you can copy and use on your website. But I basically want to use this on a Wikipedia article. So this is the Wikipedia logo. So you just click on it. Then you have the thumbnail. Then you have the uh, bare image here. So just copy this thumbnail. And in most cases, it will just position it to the right uh, hand side of, uh, of the page, just like your normal thumb. So now when you copy this, you come to the article that you already open. It comes to the top of the article like this, and you paste it. Now that is that that's been pasted, don't forget there is an existing, you know, uh, caption in 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 French here. So I need to change this to English. So this is the caption. This will not. Uh, it won't make sense to just save it this way. So non-native speaker of um, French won't understand what this is. So let's uh, rather translate this to English. So uh, like I said, I, I would like to keep the captions very simple. So I can say, this is a digital, digital uh, centrifuge, centrifuge used in medical laboratory. So uh, there are different type of centrifuge anyway. Uh, that's why you need to actually mention uh, what this is used for. So if you look at the article, the article say a centrifuge is a device with a, with a motor in it, which is used to spin an object with high speed. This high speed spinning forces the object. So basically it's telling you, it's just giving you uh, the overall uh, ways in which, I mean, the overall uh, use of, um, of centrifuge, but not particularly about the medical type of, you know, centrifuge. So, but we can add all, uh, this is a very short article. So we can add all types of centrifuge to this article. So it's, it's important to just limit this to one, but describe the exact type of centrifuge you are adding. So here it is a digital uh, centrifuge used in the medical laboratory. So it is a medical equipment that you added here. So in that case, you don't forget for the WPWP campaign, generally, when you had an image to an article, you must give a clear edit summary. You must tell people what you did. Here, it's I added an image, image of a centrifuge. So this is okay. It's a summary. It has to be as short as possible. Uh, so for WPWP campaign, we have a tool that we are using to track your contributions so that if you're making mistakes, we can easily you know, step in to say, hey, this is not how to do it. You can do it this way. Then we also use that to track your contributions in terms of um, the amount of uh, articles you've improved with photos. So we had the hashtag WPWP. So once you had this hashtag, it reflects on our database that you have actually added photos to this article. So you can preview now. So this is it. This is how it will appear. 
So in that case, you didn't break any syntax. And in one of the ways to avoid breaking syntax is to ensure that there's enough space between your photo and the article, the existing content of the article. Because if you morphs them together, like this, for example, chances are that you are going to break syntax. And it, it will be terribly bad if you don't also check or do, uh, I mean, uh, check the, uh, I mean, preview your page before publication. Some people, because they want to upload, they want to improve as much article as possible, they just click on, you know, the save button without uh, actually reviewing the, I mean, uh, previewing the article. So make sure there's a space so that you can clearly see what uh, you are adding. So in that case, we can comfortably publish our changes here. So this is a good one. Now we have actually improved these articles with photos. Uh, with a photo, uh, it will read on a database that hey, Isaac has actually user T cells have actually added one photo to this article. So that is for just add out info box. There are other articles that you can have uh, different types of info box. So let's uh, look for an example. I I find uh, I found one earlier on um, sorry okay. So I have one here about the African elephants. Look at this. So this is a typical example of, um, of an article where there is no photo in the info box. So it's important for us to, uh, if you can find a photo for this article, it's important to have one. It also, ha it also uh, uh, serves as a lead image for that uh, article. So uh, if you find an article like this, the first thing before you add to other section of the article or creating gallery is to provide at least one here. It is generally recommended that you only put one image here. So, uh, so that that can serve as a lead image for that article. So in this case now, let's uh, find the article. Okay, let's find the photo, African elephant. So you just copy the... Uh, the title, then you go to your search box, you search African elephants. So there's one African elephants. So I see that there's uh, African elephant by the saints. So we can look at that or generally let's have options. Let's click on African elephant. So here are the African elephant. There are so many options here. So um, I can just uh, take one. So I'm taking this, for example. So sometimes when you have options like this, you can, if you have the time, uh, you can actually look for the most quality uh, photos. Of course, there are different uh, qualities of photos there. So you can take time to make sure that, because the overall aim is to improve quality. So uh, we should prioritize that. So you can look for photos that is most quality and add to that article. So this is it. This this is not bad for, for a lead uh, uh, article for elite photo, right? So, just like I mentioned, we want to use on a system Wikipedia article. So, we click here. So, when you click, you have uh, this, but because I just want to use it on Infobus, so I may not necessarily just click here. So, uh, I will look at the description. They say this is African elephant. Nosodonta Africana. So this is where they found this elephant. So I can say this is African elephant, Nosodonta Africana, at H1 to 6 Road, not of Le Letaba Kruger, MP South Africa. So you can, this is not a this is not a bad caption, but you can just uh, this capitalization, you can change it to normal. Uh, capitalization. Don't overcap. 
So uh, this is not a bad um, caption. So I, I will just uh, go to my article on the elephant here and click on edits. So depending on your 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 own page, it could be edit source, it could be edit chain, whatever. So here there's a space for image. This is the width size. Then this is the caption. So I don't have business with other uh, element here. I'm most I'm most I'm I'm very much concerned with image. So uh, I won't go beyond that unless I see an error or mistakes that need uh, to be corrected. Otherwise, I'll stick to uh, the image part of this info box. Now, um, where is the file? I have too many tab open. So this is the file. So I will just copy this. So, and comes to the article. I'll paste it here. So if you look at it, I, I didn't just paste it. I, I, I allow a space between the equal to sign and the text I'm pasting. Because if you muffle them together, you are likely to break syntax. So create space so that you can see what you're doing. Then um, the width, you can just leave it. So it will fit neatly uh, to, the, to the info box. Then the caption is something that is important. Uh, we can go back to the caption here and say, this is African elephant. This is where it is found. I mean, it was found. Then um, you come back and paste it here. So remember I said, you should just do normal capitalization for the South Africa. Africa. There's no reason to use all cap. Then, um, so this is a good uh, edit summary. So sometimes the edit summary may be useful. So uh, what I'm saying in essence is that you do have to understand what you're doing, which there's no any obligation to use the, uh, the caption you find on your image, all right? You don't just blindly copy caption and paste and say, hey, the uploader say, this is what it is, no. Just like coming here and just copy and paste. No, you do have to uh, ensure that there's a connection between the photo and uh, the article in question. And if if you don't see that clear connection in the edit summary, but you think that article is much much relevant to the article, you can actually modify the caption. So in this case, after you've done that, here which we have done, so you can see that I didn't leave this as all cap. I corrected it. I change this to the normal uh, capitalization that it should be. So here you write the same. I had it photo. I had a photo. A photo. So that's what you did. So for the WPWP campaign, campaign purpose and tracking, you just add WPWP. So you preview. So there's something I wanted to point out earlier. I decided to not mention it first. Here, when I was copying the, the file, here, I didn't copy it alongside with this file. I ignored this. For Infobus use, you don't need this aspect. All you need is the file itself, the description. I mean, the yeah, the file description and the uh, corresponding, corresponding format, maybe JPEG or whatever. But you don't need this uh, aspect. So just like I mentioned earlier, there's no need per se to actually put, put image width size. Some people will just put 250PZ, whatever. So it's create additional stress for you. So there's no point. It will automatically fits the info box, which uh, we have seen here. So now that you think everything is okay, you've provided edit summary and you've added um, the caption. And um, I mean, your caption is clear and uh, you've added the hashtag for WPWP. 
then you can save your changes. So it appears on the article this way. So the article is more beautiful now with a photo in the leads, uh, I mean, as a lead photo in the, in the info box. So I think uh, uh, I'll stop here. Uh, if there are questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thanks very much for that. Um, I think there was a, um, Florence was showing how we can use PetScan um, that's linked in the chat to, um, to find. I also like that. That's how you said it. To find the, um, the, Im the articles that don't have images. So uh, if you look in the chat, there are there is a, a way of finding articles within certain categories that don't have lead images. Um, and that's one way that you can find articles across the Wikimedia projects um, specifically to, to populate with or illustrate with articles. Um, Isaac, well done. The, the, this is a really great project. Um, so, and th thanks for explaining it all. And also it shows like how important it is that um, images are used it's, it's actually scientifically, uh, people will read articles in more depth if there is there are images involved because it um, allows the brain the reason to pause and it also adds contextual information as well. So it's not just um, more just academic kind of consumption. It also allows kind of visual a much better, richer understanding of the subject matter. And that's why it's, it's really important. Um, Okay, thank you, Isaac. Uh, has anyone got a question for Isaac while we are? I'm going to come up next um, and I'm just going to do a quick introduction to the ESA tool, which is another way of um, contributing by adding descriptions uh, in a fun way. Um, does anyone have a question for Isaac, though, over WPWP? Cool. All right. If you do have a question or it occurs to you once um, while we're moving uh, through the, the, the process, then, um, then please do uh, ask it in the chat. I did want to ask Isaac, it's a, a global campaign. Do you want to say when it's going to happen? Okay. Th thank you very much. Uh, it will happen in July, uh, July 1st and run through August. We will hand okay. it in September. So guys, get your, you know, get ready. <laughs> just, just, just in case, Isaac, do you actually know if Wiki Loves Earth will happen this year? I am or not does sure. anyone know? Or does anyone know? I, I am not sure because I, I expect to see their grant application in the uh, project grants, uh, but I, I didn't see it. So I, I don't know if, if that will hold. And there's no, uh, I'm not seeing any, any anything, uh, you know, from them that indicates that if you hold this, well, it might hold, but there's nothing too serious coming out at, at the moment. I was wondering, yeah. I, I didn't think of checking the, the grant request indeed. I was just trying to follow the main page and I, I don't see much happening there. So I was wondering, we have lined it up, it will happen. So at least in some countries it will happen. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Thank so you, I'm, just gonna quick, I'm just going to quickly introduce you to um, the ESA tool that uh, is a, was conceptualized by uh, Wiki in Africa and then was a collaboration between Histropedia and uh, the Structured Data on um, Commons project um, and funded through the Wikimedia Foundation. but. It's basically, we conceptualized the ESA tool in order to initially uh, make sure that the uh, Wiki Loves Africa images were more useful uh, to the Wikimedia community. But of course, uh, it was developed to make sure that any category, not necessarily just Wiki Loves Africa, but whether it was Wiki Loves Earth or Wiki Loves 
folklore or wiki loves public art or wiki loves dogs it doesn't really matter like but whichever category could be included um can be run can run a campaign so it can be as small or as large as possible and uh, i don't know if anyone has come through a uh, part of isa tool uh, development is that we run campaigns through very obvious campaigns as part of wiki loves africa and wiki loves women um but other organizations and other user groups and other communities also run their own so i'm just going to run you quickly just show you quickly how it works uh, it is based on tool forge uh, there's a comments page that you can find it through the wiki loves africa um comment on at the top of wiki loves africa there's a whole load of links to all the different years and to the isa tool um but then you can also find it uh through Commons page as uh, the ESA tool, and you can also find it on Toolforge uh, at esa.toolforge.org. And basically, it allows you to um, add in a similar way that when you upload using the upload wizard, that you add depicts statements. It allows you to uh, run campaigns or run uh, little drives that helps communities to understand why it's important to add. Uh, to describe images and add link those to the um, to the, the wiki data statements um, in the form of structured data. So it also, as we've been discussing the whole day, that this is kind of like how um, it makes it adds those extras layers that make images important. So as you can see in the open picture that we have about the fishermen in a canoe on the Volta River, that the different aspects that make up the image. Um, even though it's a fisherman, there's lots of other elements that are part of the image. So there's, there are ripples, there's water, there's the fisherman itself, there's wood, there's a fishing net, there's a canoe, there's other elements in here. So, um, so at the moment, we are running as part of Wiki, um, uh, as part of Women's Month, we're running a, uh, an annual campaign that we have, which is Tell Us About Her um, for Wiki Loves Women. And it's allowing, basically, it's about grouping a whole um, series of photographs under a certain category, in this case, women at work, that then allows um, people to contribute in their ways. And again, it adds each mention, each depict statement that is added adds to the, um, adds to your contribution count. Um, and you can see, like in this, this campaign has only been going since the 1st of March, um, but we've had over 81,000 contributions that have been made. So those are 81,000 different um, descriptions that have been added to each of the images. So just using this one as a tool, um, you can you then get started. And I'm just going to take, sometimes takes a while. Um, and you're shown an image. So if you go close to it, you can actually pick up the different elements in the background. Uh, so you can see the roof, you can see the machinery at the back there. And if you had any knowledge about, um, <laughs> about uh, what she is working on, then you would be, added, be able to add a little bit more information. But then in this case, you still, so we've got engi an engine, we've got a helmet, we've got a woman, we've got workshop, we've got a man who's in the background, but we've also got like uh, protective clothing. And in the same way, you can see, um, because she's in overalls, you can see that that would also be something. Um, and there's also, she has uh, reflective strips. Reflective clothing? No. So sometimes, again, in the same way, uh, you have things that um, add, and then you, because I've done protective clothing, you can then press save. So there can also be things like concrete floor, or um, I don't know what the technical, there are quite a few technical terms that I have no idea. So there are like gears and levers and different elements as well that could be added. So even though this is about making sure that women are seen, um, and it would be great if this image was added to um, 
to a, a site about um, factories or uh, machinery, then that would be a great way of making sure that women are seen within non-traditional um, jobs. So, um, yeah, so again, uh, a caption you could add here. So the, the description here is uh, in French. Um, so it's a female mechanic uh, working on an engine in, a, in an enterprise in Douala. Um, am I getting that right, Florence? <laughs> or Ceslas? Or anyone, Mamous? Uh, so I'm just going to add um, woman mechanic working on a, an engine in um, a factory in Douala. All right, so there's two elements. So within this case, you add depict, which so you add like the elements within, little elements like red box, or uh, there's all sorts of uh, palettes in the background there you could do. Um, and then you can also add captions in different so in this case you could add it in French or uh, some other languages whatever language is uh, in your um, in your in your on your computer has been activated on your computer um, although there is a limitation, uh, and I don't know, maybe it's better if Florence talks about that, there is a limitation on um, the kinds of languages that uh, are that are loaded on here. Uh, yes? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you can, you can choose up to six languages. We assume that most people manage less than six languages. This is not entirely true. And of course, there are magic people who speak 20 languages. But you can do that if you look at the top on the right, this is your username. Uh, do remember that you, to edit the tool, you have to be logged in using the central login system, the MediaWiki one. And here in, the, in your preferences, you can indicate as, as, long, as much as six languages. Okay, so up here. So at the moment, there's English and French for me that are indicated, uh, but I think you have to go through. There are two different things. There is the language of the interface and there's the language that you can use for the caption. The language of the interface, unfortunately, uh, was not translated in many languages, never happened. But the language of the caption, you can, you can mention them in, at the top when you click on your username. Okay. Yeah. Uh, language preferences. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and so, therefore, uh, this is a great way to um, gear up your, com your, especially say post uh, a photo competition space. So once the photo competition um, is finished, it's also great to then run amongst your community, say, where he loves Earth in Uganda, and, and ask them to kind of like add more information because a lot of the, well, over 80% of the people who come to Wiki Loves Afri Africa and a lot of the people who are attracted to uh, the competitions within Africa, the photographic competitions, over 80% of them are new people um, and newbies. So it's actually really important to then, they won't know how to um, add the information that we've been talking about all today. So it would be, this is one way to make sure that the images are as relevant, even because it's just layers of information that people know. And so if you go um, to the campaigns page, you can see there's a whole load of campaigns here. Uh, you can run them either through a time frame, so you can have a stop and start space, or you can actually have it open um, as to whether it continues or not. You can have it just for a day event. So you could have it for a conference. Um, often we've run these uh, ESA campaigns during a conference or a convention in order to make it fun for people um, to use while they're at a certain space and to make and to add photographs of 
the area that they're in. So when we were in Stockholm, we ran a, Wiki, a Wikimania one for images around uh, Wikimania and Stockholm. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, and then you can also create a new campaign uh, using this tool. And it's easy, very easy to do. But if you need more information, there is an ESA manual on the Commons page for it. Um, and I put a whole video about how to add, um, how you track your campaign and how you add information onto there. Okay, I don't know why actually you, it's not. Can you up. show? Can you show again the the creation, the campaign creation page? Yes, I can. Well, you've just created. Uh, the, the, I yeah. just wanted to give a, a few. There's there are very few um, elements to mention. There's a campaign name. Uh, with a short description and a long description. It's completely optional for the long description. Start date, uh, finishing date. Please keep in mind that it can be a very big campaign meant for many people, or it can be a one person campaign just because you want to improve a, a set of images. And uh, uh, the way you select the images is that you simply add the categories to use in the campaign. So it's in the, in the middle of the screen here, you can see it. Uh, you can add as many uh, categories as you want. So it can be just one. It can be images from Wiki Loves Africa in Uganda in 2021 uh, in Uganda. And that will be a certain number of images, or it can be a large one. I advise not to go way beyond 10,000 images because the tool forge, not the tool, but the tool forge, the server hosting, the tool is quite slow. So if the category host too many images, it will be tough for them. Um, and so you can choose several categories. And in, when you select a category, you can go deeper. You can select subcategories up to, down to five different levels, five levels. So of course, in the case of Wikilobs Africa in Uganda, there will be only one level, but you might have in other cases, uh, other categories. Then we will find the depict and the caption that we will have seen early on. And it's a good idea to put a campaign image because that's nice. But if you don't want to, then you don't want to. And that's about all you have to add to create a campaign. So it's very simple, not a lot of information. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that the administration of a campaign is super simple. So there's only one administrator. So the person who create the campaign will be the only person managing the campaign. Then he can open it to everyone, of course, but he will be the only one to change the category system. Uh, we have used it in diff very different circumstances. Once I created a category just for me, because I wanted to improve the images of just one area, it can be big, such as some of, of the ones that I have showed you. So it's fairly simple. And the tool is mostly meant to be used quite easily on cell phone and such. So it's a, an easy one for event. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of information on the user manual. Um, so if you want any more detail, please come and speak to us as well. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. I wonder if anyone has any questions about that or anything that Isaac or um, myself has said. Um, Oh, and yes. you see in the you tab here, there is the ESA challenges. Please click on the ESA challenges. Okay, so, yes. Uh, Sorry. Feel free to, if you create a campaign, just feel free to add it here. No problem. It's not us only. It's not uh, just us. If, if you want to, just do it. And you also get these graphics. So this was the last year's Tell Us About Her graphic, which show, shows you who's contributed, where they've come from, uh, which is also really interesting. But obviously, if you're running an, a campaign that's just um, for Cameroon, it will only show Cameroonian people. So um, we have hands up from Ruby and yes, Mohammed. Ruby, you were you had your hands up first, and then Mohammed can go afterwards. Hello, thank you. I can't hear you properly. Uh, you don't be. Hello. Okay. Hi, hello. Better. Better. Hi, that's better. <laughs> okay, so this is a very interesting um, discussion. 
And I think um, I'm pretty new to the ESA tool. I wanted to um, understand a little bit or clarify how um, this works. Does that mean that we can upload images directly to that platform or it has to go through the commons platform um, or it's linked to commons? I just wanted a clarification okay. on that. It's yeah, completely so linked to Commons, so it the images are all uploaded just as usual on Wikimedia Commons. It's an additional tool that just allows to edit these images from ISA. So when you create a campaign, you select categories of images that are in categories which are on Wikimedia Commons. So there's no uploading anything to the ESA tool itself. It just literally oh. in the images from that category on commons and you just concentrate on that category. So there's no uploading. There's no kind of it's just a uh, it's a medium or a platform, but it doesn't has it doesn't hold any information. It just basically takes that information and puts it back onto the image. It's just kind of like a conduit as such. It's not intending to have anything. Oh, wow. uh, any, the only thing you are adding are you you are linking image like the the depict statement back to the image, or you are adding a caption. Basically, that's that's pretty much it. But it's just oh, a nice okay. way of doing it and presenting it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. I think that. Yeah. All right. Um, Mohammed, do you want to? Tell us to ask a question. Yeah. yeah, I have a small question. Sure. Um, uh, which is about uh, the size of um, the image that when we uh, when we upload our pictures on uh, on the contest, um, how does about the minimum size and the maximum size that to upload our picture and the dimensions for the con yeah. for the contest? You mean? Yeah. Great, Mohammed. This is a really great question. Um, the the minimum. So we run the judging through a tool which is called Montage, and Montage automatically throws out images that are under uh, two megabytes. So um, and also realistically, uh, anything that's below two megabytes is not really useful. You know, it is useful like on a small screen, but it's not very useful um, in the larger scale of things. So anything that's over two megabytes is preferable, but we would prefer over three. Um, but yeah, anything under two, two megabytes doesn't really get entered into the judging process. But I don't think there's any upper limit. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that anything that will be too big uh, will break anything that's too big for your file sizing and for your kind of um, technology is probably too big for anything. So, <laughs> um, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, right. Um, and also, um, uh, how many pictures that we uh, for for each of one have to upload? Is it is it so, uh, limited uh, or? There's no limit to how many pictures you upload. Obviously, we ask you to bet uh, for quality rather than just quantity. But yes, there's, you know, yeah. if you have 50 amazing pictures, we want to see them. And as long as they yeah. uh, talk to the theme, then that's, we want to see them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's Even nice. beyond the theme, if they're cool, <laughs> if they're nice, <laughs> beyond the theme is fine. We rather that they were. <laughs> the theme <laughs> uh, don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't tell me that i have a lot of pictures so you can consider the theme is fairly broad <laughs> so Mohammed is one of the, the photographers from uh, egypt he's one of the winners from last year uh, yeah. from pre uh, two years last year two years ago i don't know yeah. two years uh last year i was uh, one of um uh, judges uh, and uh, before the last year, uh, uh, I was the third place. Yes. So we're very grateful to have you here. But yes, please, yeah. because you. of the quality of your images, please <laughs> contribute <laughs> as many as possible. 
I think unless I'm uh, wrong, in most cases, when I look at the pictures, uh, winning contests such as Wikilove's monument, they are more around four or five megabytes generally. Yeah, I, I like to use that most of them like uh, around six megabytes, seven megabytes, eight yeah. max for it. That so it can be uploaded fast uh, also. Yeah, yeah I, I think if you're getting into the, like you know beyond twenty, then I think you know you're you're more likely to crash your system than you are to crash Wikimedia uh, no. files. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I agree, know, yeah. five yeah. six is cool. Is yeah, a uh, perfect, yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. I will work on it. Very good question. Does anybody else have any other questions? I know that we've kept you for a long time, and thank you for everyone who's persisted in being with us. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. I just come late, actually. <laughs> yeah, thank well, thank you. Feel, feel free to um check out, I'm um, sharing just in case the link simply. Uh, there are, for those who were not there at the beginning, we have listed there, there's the, there are the slides of ESAC presentations, there are the links to the tool campaign, there's the link to the wonderful image checking page from Guillaume, there's the link to the search system, the tool for SD search, uh, and as well as the tutorial that Ayla did last year for the upload wizard to submit a picture. So feel free to uh, drop to to get there. Drop get the link, and if you have further questions, just ask them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh. All right. So I want to take the opportunity to thank everybody for being here, especially Liam and um, and Isaac for their amazing uh, work that they do with us on Wiki Loves Africa, but also for um, sharing with us that work and beyond the, um, the stuff. Uh, the work on commons is never done. <laughs> so even, even beyond uh, contributing and contributing to Wiki Loves Africa, please consider getting involved, uh, involved in larger um, work within the commons um, in whatever capacity floats, um, makes you, is interesting to you. So uh, thanks very much. Uh, have a great rest of your day on Saturday, this Saturday, and enjoy your weekend. And uh, we'll we look forward to seeing your photos uh, contributing to Wiki Loves Africa this year. Thank you. <laughs>